Hello and thank you for joining me for another desktop review on Run Level Zero. Today we're taking a look at OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE is one of the oldest and most popular Linux distributions and is currently ranked number six on DistroWatch. OpenSUSE typically comes in two flavors uh, and the KDE desktop obviously and a GNOME 3 version. So we're going to start by looking at this KDE desktop, which is considered by many the default standard OpenSUSE flavor. OpenSUSE is closely aligned and, and actually part of Novell, and they were recently acquired by Attachmate, Attachmate, I hope I'm saying that right. But it's been growing in popularity over the years, and for good reason. It is a great Linux distribution. So what do you get with OpenSUSE? OpenSUSE will start by talking about their release cycle, their, their, their updates. Uh, it is a more traditional update cycle uh, in which you have to download groups of security patches and then when a new version comes out you'll have to upgrade or install a new version. But OpenSUSE is kind of unique because if you're a more advanced user should you desire, you can convert OpenSUSE to a more uh, rolling release type cycle. It's not a true rolling release, but it, it would follow a more rolling release type cycle. So you get a lot of, of, of configurability, uh, a lot of control over your OpenSUSE system. With an OpenSUSE KDE desktop, you get a more traditional layout. Would OpenSUSE be right for a new user? Uh, perhaps. If you're a new user who's dedicated and who wants to uh, really experiment a bit, if, if you don't mind reaching outside the box, outside your comfort zone some, then yes, the OpenSUSE might be, new, might be good for that new user. But typically I would recommend OpenSUSE as a second desktop for somebody that's transitioning to a more intermediate stage, certainly an advanced user would like OpenSUSE. So on the traditional desktop of OpenSUSE, you have a quick launch area for icons for the Firefox web browser, the K Info Center, which if we show that to you, it gives you a summary showing you what's running on your desktop and, and uh, how your system is performing. In fact, you can click into memory and see how your memory is running. So right now, it's actually requiring, so we have a total of one, wow, it's running on 900 meg of RAM right now. So uh, that's kind of heavy, even by KDE's current standards. So I definitely, definitely would not recommend the OpenSUSE KDE for an older system. You're going to need newer hardware for this to get the most out of it. But let's see, you have... Uh, a launcher here for LibreOffice, access for online help, and the OpenSUSE website. You have a single panel across the bottom, nice transparency set up on it, with access to a clock and calendar, notification area, network connection settings, volume control, clipboard manager, and a it looks like the update manager have 35 updates available and notifications and jobs. Open applications of course are displayed on the central portion. You have quick access to Dolphin, the uh, KDE file manager with a typical looks like default set of icons. Quick access, quick launcher for the Firefox web browser a pager with two virtual desktops set up and it does look like the the KWIN effects are disabled by default and you have this activities manager and this is a pretty neat utility because through this activities manager you'll see you have three different desktop these are actually desktop uh, flavors or desktop settings you can see the ones that are currently running if I click the stop icon and play I can change to a clean desktop layout with no icons. I can get back to my grouped icon set that I had before. That's the default one. 
or I can implement a more traditional with the icons appearing directly on the desktop. So I like that amount of control it gives you. The application launcher is standard KDE application launcher application menu with your favorites and shortcuts to your applications. The applications that come installed on OpenSUSE are categorized. See plenty of games. You have board games, some Mahjong, a couple puzzle games, of course K-Mines, and oops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> you have several card games. Let's see, under graphics, photography sub-menu, there are a variety of photography uh, applications installed as well as drawing program from LibreOffice and an image viewer. For internet you have a chat client. Well, it looks like we have several. Microblogging, chat, IRC for uh, client which is conversation and Copete for instant messaging. Under email, Kmail is, is the email client. For web browser you do have Firefox as the default, but because it's KDE, you have Conqueror installed as well. KTorrent is for BitTorrent, and you have an FTP client. Under Multimedia, AMZ Downloader and Amrock is installed, as well as K3B for disk burning and your KMix sound mixer. For Office, you have the LibreOffice suite installed. Under System, you have a variety of system configurations, and this is one of the areas that OpenSUSE really stands apart because it has their YAST control center, which is one of the most comprehensive integrated control centers around. Let's pull that open here. Using YAST, you can really configure every aspect of your system right from this one control panel. From software, hardware, and it's, it's all grouped and categorized very well. I'm willing to go out on a limb and say that the YAST Control Center from OpenSUSE is one of the most thorough, well put together, functional control panels that I've seen in Linux. Uh, the, the only one that would even come close to it would be the one from Magia and Mandriva, or Open Mandriva now. So yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with that. Let's take a look at your software manager. Apper is installed as, let's see, for your software manager you have Apper it looks like. Let's get back in there and see what that was again. Oh, I hate it when it does that. Because you have the YAS2, you have a couple of different uh, software management modules. YAS2 is going to give you um, a finer level of control over the over the software that's installed on your system kind of similar to Synaptic Package Manager you, ha you can search for installed and available applications but you can also click on the RPM groups tab and see a more uh, I don't want to say it's easier to navigate but it's a it's a a, a, a better grouping of applications. So if you don't know the particular name that you're looking for, but you know you're looking for a web browser, uh, you can come down to networking, web and browsers, and you can see what's available. And there's a good summary and description of it. It's not the most user friendly. I would not recommend YAS2 uh, software manager for the new user. Luckily, Apper is installed. So Apper is a bit better, uh, still not the best uh, software, not, not the, the, the most user-friendly software manager I've seen, but it, it, it hits a bit closer. 
So this is the KDE version of OpenSUSE. Now let's go over and take a look at the GNOME 3 implementation. This is the GNOME 3 implementation of OpenSUSE. So what does this implementation have to offer? Well, the GNOME 3 desktop is a modern Linux desktop that is user-friendly, but it is decidedly Linux. It will be foreign to new users, uh, somebody coming over from Mac or Windows. So it could take a bit of getting used to. As is typical with GNOME 3 desktop implementations, right-clicking the desktop will allow you to access your settings panel or change the desktop background. You have one primary desktop with one panel across the top. A notifications area is hidden along the bottom. In the upper right hand side of the, of the panel here you have a notifications area, battery monitor if applicable, volume control, as well as access to your session uh, controls. So you'll be able to control your volume, power settings, session settings, switch user, access the control panel, lock the session, or power down, reboot the machine. All right from this one corner. In the center portion of the panel is a calendar and clock, and you can also manage your schedule from here. In the upper left-hand corner is your activities menu, and this is where you're going to conduct most of your business. So clicking on activities will open the activities menu. On the left-hand side, you have access to your uh, favorites. It is a searchable menu, and you can search your documents, you can search your, uh, your applications from here. Any open windows, let's go ahead and pull one open. Let's pull open Firefox to show you how this works. So by opening an application, anything that you have running, when you click on the activities menu, you'll see those items displayed in the middle. So every window you have open, every application you have open will be displayed here. And you can drag and drop, change the focus, or even close an application from here. On the right hand side of the activities menu is your virtual desktop manager, which will always give you a free desktop. You can also drag and drop applications from one desktop to another using this panel. So let's see what applications are installed. Your applications are lo located at the bottom of your favorites menu. Clicking on it will give you a uh, iconified menu with pages. The pages are these little dots here. So how does this differ from the KDE version of OpenSUSE? You still have a wide implementation of games. And one thing I don't like about this, uh, earlier versions of GNOME 3 actually had its menus categorized so you could choose from web or office you know the systems uh, applications but that's been removed in newer versions and I'm not really a fan of that personally I like having my things neatly organized this way the current model it's, everything's just thrown up on on the screen and you kinda have to figure out what what it is you're looking for but in the KDE implementation you get cheese for your webcam you get the GIMP uh, for your graphics gedit is the uh, text editor of choice here. You get gparted for your partition editing. Once again, you get the LibreOffice suite. For Software Center, let's see what we have. I didn't look at the Software Center on here to see how it differs. Okay, you have Yast. Yast Software Manager. but this one appears to be a bit more uh, refined so everything so this is a better implementation in my opinion of the software center uh, maybe this is hidden somewhere on the KDE side but uh, I certainly didn't see it so that'd be worth looking for to see if this particular wrapper is available on the KDE side getting back to our software on page two Midnight Commander is installed. We have a setting of network tools. Clicking on settings should bring open the GNOME 3 panel. 
but we'll see. Yep, it brings clicking on the settings brings open the GNOME 3 control panel, but there is a shortcut to our YAS control panel. So you can launch YAS from here. Which it has a bit of a different wrapper on it than what's available in KDE, but still has your stuff in it. Personally, I prefer the KDE YAS Control Center. And of course, we have an app on page three of the applications, we have a direct access to YAS, XChat, and a video player. I don't know. Kind of have mixed feelings on the that was my control panel or my 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 panel there off my host system. I don't know my my feelings on the GNOME 3 implementation of OpenSUSE. If you like GNOME 3, go for it. But personally, when it comes to OpenSUSE, I would rather stick with the KDE version. I don't know. I may be wrong, but it kind of feels like the GNOME 3 was was added as an afterthought, and it doesn't feel quite as polished as the KDE version. But still, hey, if GNOME 3 is what you like, then you, 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 you could definitely do worse than to do the OpenSUSE version. So, if you're a new user, OpenSUSE may be good for you. If you're intermediate or advanced, you definitely can't fail with OpenSUSE. Uh, it is number six on DistroWatch for a reason. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. If, there, if you have any questions or any desktops you'd like me to review, please leave it in the comments below. I'll be happy to take a peek at them or try to answer your questions. And this is Run Level Zero. Thank you for joining me. And as always, I hope to be with you again soon for another video.